Hi, welcome back to Hooked on Gingerbread. This is video two of my 2022, a lot of twos in there, series. Um, this is the apartment building from Friends. If you saw my first video, I showed you how to uh, make a paper pattern first and then build, build the, well, the first part of your foam core. Now I'm going to, in this video, I'm going to take this apart a little bit to show you the different elements. I'm also going to show you, I'm not exactly finished with it yet because I did find some errors but I wanted to show them to you. I'm also going to go over the, an important part of this build is your board. I know that sounds really funny but it's really important. You, you should never go with a bare board. Um, and also, uh, planning the board ahead of time really, really helps with your overall, the overall appearance of your gingerbread project, as well as, you know, the structure of your gingerbread project. It's really important to have a certain kind of wood, certain thickness of wood, etc. So with that in mind, let's get started. First, what we're going to do is I'm going to I'm going to separate this out for you. <laughs> so here's build. This is building two, as we discussed in our in the video uh, previously. This is building three. All right. So when I was talking to you about building one, the first change I made was I said that the the floor on this 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 piece right here should match all the way around. Ah! And that is not true. See, I'm going to keep this in the video. <laughs> so you don't want your second, you don't want your second floor to um, hug, hug, hug this wall here. You want it, you want it to protrude out just like I have it. So here you go. You can see the protrusion. Also, um, yeah, I don't have the pins in well enough. <laughs> I think my fingers started hurting. But, um, well, I didn't stick the pins in, in very well. But this is, so this is your first and your second, your second floor. Wow, I really didn't stick those pins in well enough. There you go. Your first and second floor. All right. Now what you've got left, we'll put this sucker back on is your um, your other floors. Now they're all the same. All the floors are the same size. What I mean by floors is this this right here, the the foam the, the foam the foam floor for each. Even though they look a little crooked. And up here at the top this is going to fall apart again. I might as well just take it off. Come here, you. All right, so what I did find when I was making my model was up at the top here, I had, with my paper pattern, I had made this all one piece, right? I think that's wrong, actually. Because if you look at the model that we had, it, it has a... Um, it has a lip on it, and you can go look into the roof. So what I did was, I took an inch off the top of this, put a, put a ceiling on it, and then took that inch and then added it to added it to the top. So you get this nice little space here. I'm I'm actually going to here's our model over here. So the model has this um, these water towers on them, and I'm going to put that in. They also, if you can't see, if you have the model and following along with me, you know what I'm talking about. They have air conditioner thingies here. They look like air conditioner things. Anyway, I'm going to put those in as well. So this big lip here will give me that. It'll it'll cut you. You can see you can see it, but from the viewer, if you're just looking like this straight on, you won't be able to see the air conditioners, which is the point. <laughs> but you want to have 
that amount of detail in the building so that's why I, I put the lip in and that's the way that's the way the building really is it's got this lip here that you're just not going to be able to of course the building you know you can't separate the floors like I'm doing <laughs> so, anyway so here it is um, also with this building uh, this is Monica's apartment and if you have the model you can see that it actually the window actually protrudes like this as well so um, I'm going to be I, I made the window protrude a little bit the, the key is to see if you want to know how much detail to really put into your foam core uh, a good rule of thumb is anything that you want to be gingerbread that's what you put into the foam core so um, usually so if I'm going to do something like in ginger clay I won't I won't put it in foam core I will make a mold of it if there's a lot of them if not then I just freehand it when time comes make sure this is nasty this is gonna, this is gonna stay on pretty well for now so um, my next building is building number two now this is this has got a mistake in it can you see the mistake um, what, it, what building two does is it actually um, it wraps around sort of like this and it comes up to Monica's um, Monica's window here it fits in really well right and I thought okay no big deal it, it, you know I've got it uh, it's good straight oh, straighten it out for you no big deal right it, it fits it's great no <laughs> So the problem with building two is this. You have, let me move this over, it's probably gonna fall over again. Um, you have this open space here. Now, as a viewer, you're not gonna see that. You're not gonna see it, you know, when you, when you have this in gingerbread, you're not gonna see this. And so why bother putting in walls, right? Well, I actually have this knack now after doing these for 20 years. I'm able to visualize what would happen to the gingerbread during the humid months <laughs> and they're going to be coming up here in a couple months so uh, the gingerbread here this would be supported but this isn't supported this um, this open space here isn't supported by any gingerbread so or any you know this is faux gingerbread right this isn't supported so what's going to happen is you're going to get drooping you could here possibly possibly get drooping here you don't want to take any chances okay so what I'm going to do I won't show it on this video of course but I'm going to put in either you don't uh, I'm gonna put in walls here here and here I'm just gonna fill this all in with walls to give it more structure now it's up to you um, if you're making a smaller version than I am, maybe you won't need it, but it's better to be safe than sorry, right? Because <laughs> you don't want to work on this and work on this and work on this and then have it go completely on you. So what I did up here at the top where her, where her, the apartment, right, right here, I did the same thing as I did up here. I just, I added a strip because of the model, get the model out again. So on the model, it has like, like a balcony type deal here, right there. And I know in the show that they do go out on that balcony. And I kind of remember, you know, it being so high. I didn't want to hurt the integrity of my model. You know, I wanted to go with what it had, but also I want, but I also wanted to show, you know, we do have something here. My people are going to be about four, you know, about three and a half to four inches tall. So technically, this is still not right because, you know, it, it might it might come up to their their not even their waist here. But you get the idea. Now on the model, it does come even though this building is right here, it does come over like this. So I kept I kept the lip. I kept this I kept it going the strip going all the way back and I pushed this piece back a bit so your this the door the door going to the other buildings uh, roof is flush so all of this is flush here and then you have the opening 
here. What I did up here was I just, I just, um, I wanted something. I didn't want to put in another big lip like this because you're gonna, you gotta really wash your windows. You don't want these, these, these lips or whatever on the um, Aaron. There's a real term for this. Aaron told me what it was and I forgot. But um, <laughs> there's. Um, you don't want it hindering the window, so you want to make sure that you're not hitting the windows. Well, if I would have gone as tall as this right here, it would have hurt my windows. And the windows are more important to me than being correct with anything else. So I just put two strips of foam core there here to just show that there is, you know, it's not flat and there is something there. Um, but I think that's about it with this one. Uh, as you can see, I, as I told you in the last video that I modified, and I'll show you why in a minute, this building, um, it's not exactly like the model. So I, if you see, I kept the store here, but I cut out, I cut out a, how many windows? Four, so I, 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 I like sliced it here but I kept the store because I thought the store was really cute and there was a lot of like wasted space over here and I really needed this thing to be thinner than it was so um, you'll you'll notice that my model isn't like isn't exactly like my my foam core model isn't exactly like the puzzle oh please don't fall off okay so the next one building three I said that oh you only need um, three walls wrong for the exact same reason that I gave you for this one sure you could go without a back wall but I don't think I think maybe this building could probably get away with three walls um, but who wants to take a chance on that I mean it's not that much more gingerbread really um, so I went ahead and put put the walls in just for structure again I haven't put in um, this yet this the, I'm gonna put in, I think I'm just gonna just put in um, something like this here as well now I want to show you something else with this model let me put it make sure it's all together here and put it where it's supposed to be yeah. <laughs> um, Okay, so in the in the real in the in the the 3D puzzle, I really like how these are different. These two buildings here are differentiated between each other. So I like the way this building is smaller. This this building's like dips in a little bit and smaller than this building. Problem is when I I cut this down it actually made them even see so now they're even um i i don't <coughs> this is where having a foam core model really really helps because if i had a paper model i probably wouldn't have seen this but you can really see what you like and what you don't like so what i'm probably going to do to fix just to give me something some definite some a different I am going to do different bricks on here, but I still think it'd be like really weird looking to actually have them flush. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut probably a half inch off, not a half inch, maybe a fourth of an inch, well, a total of a half inch, a fourth of an inch off of each side of here uh, at each of these sides here and that would give me a you know it, it would bring it in to about here and that would just differentiate it enough to make me feel better <laughs> so it's up to you another thing I did that's different to the model is over here on this side they had they have like a ledge here it's it's like it's not it's just it's like painted in it's not like a really ledge for the puzzle and I put that in right and I started looking at it and it really 
really hampered, you know, when I put it on the board, if I were to bring that in, it's just, it's not going to, it's not really going to add, it's not going to really add anything to the project. It's really good, actually a distraction um, because it really doesn't look right. If you do it the way it shows it, um, it just doesn't seem right to me. So I took the ledge out, but I'm still going to have the the, um, the uh, central central perk uh, painting on the side. I'm just not going to have that ledge on it. But I think that's it. I think that's all I did different. So, but the big one is I did cut this down. It's much. Oh my goodness! I'm dropping dropping light light fixtures again from my model. <laughs> So the only real big, big, big difference is that it, it's thinner. So if I were to have made this to scale, I mean to, you know, made it as just like the model, it would have pushed it up. Huh, it would have pushed it up like about like to here on my, uh, I don't know if you can see that, on my board. And that wouldn't have given me enough room for my story. And I wanted to, I wanted to do a story. Okay, so let's get into the story. The story, well, it's the story that you want to tell, right? So if you just put a building up, I mean, this building is very detailed, if you, especially if you go by the model. But I don't know. I, I think that um, you need, you, you, I want a little more. So, you know, like I said, it, it's, it's up to you what you want to do. Um, but what my story is, is um, I wanted to, the original plan was to uh, put the building, you know, the, in the back, and then I was going to have the sidewalk, the road, and then a park here with the iconic fountain and the couch and the lamp and the coffee table. And I was going to put... Um, I was going to be laying on the, I was, I was going to, have to make a figure of me laying on the couch covered in icing and, you know, in my hair, everything, and have icing, be passed out on the couch with, with, a, with an icing bag in my hand and then a replica of this gingerbread house, you know, the miniature version, on the coffee table and have coffee and like a little a bowl of icing that type of thing next to it and just just a mess right on the coffee table and then have the, the cast of friends behind me um, just looking at me like what in the heck you know <laughs> and, um, and that's why the, the project name is the one where they discover they discover the joy of gingerbread problem is I ran out of real estate. So um, if you look, I only have, I've got the, the sidewalk is drawn out here. This is where the sidewalk should be. The road is here, ran out of real estate. And, and you're going to have that a lot. Um, that's why it's really important to make a foam core building, put it up and see how it's going to fall and how it's going to sit on your board. So. Um, what I'm going to do now, I have to figure out, all right, am I going to, um, you know, put the, make the sidewalk wider and then, um, you know, put the, put the, uh, street out here and I just put the, the couch on the sidewalk or do I just put the couch in the road? <sighs> to me, it really doesn't matter. I kind of think it's funnier if I put it in the road. Um. But, you know, it's, it's, it's really um, up to the designer. Now, if you have a smaller building than mine, you could probably do it. But, you know, your story is your story. If, if you don't, you know, you just want to have something fun outside of the building. So, with that said, why is it important to know your story ahead of time? Why is it important to, you know, have all this ahead of time? It's because uh, the bottom line, it, you, this your board has to be laid out. If you're and if you don't plan correctly, if you change your story midstream, let's just say that I decided, hey, I'm just going to not 
you know, do a story or whatever. I'm going to put my, my building like right here, build my board. Well, there you go. You just screwed up your story because <laughs> then you really don't have any space for anything. You don't have any space for storytelling. If you want to do some action out here, um, you don't have any space for it. So that, that's why it's important. Um, and also with this, uh, I have to know, like, okay, why is it important to know where the sidewalk is versus the road, blah, 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 right? Well, when I... Um, it cannot be an afterthought. It, I mean, sometimes you can get away with it. I mean, uh, I'm telling you, with this, it would be very difficult to get away with it. Um, because when I, I have to build up my road, I have to build up my sides of the road. Remember, you know, they've got curbs. You just can't do a flat road, right? There's curbs in New York City. And there's curbs everywhere, pretty much. Um, so you want to, you have to build these, you know, the to two sides of the road up, if that's what you're going with. So um, I usually do that with either one Rice Krispie treats with gi ground gingerbread in them, or, but this time I'm actually doing just sheets of gingerbread. Um, because this is going to be, it's a bigger building, it's heavy, type of, it's a heavy, going to be heavier than most. So I'm, and Rice Krispie treats doing that route is very hard to get level. I mean, level, level on all sides. Um, so I'm I'm doing the sheets of gingerbread route. So I need to know how big are these sheets going to be? Um, where where's my sidewalk start? Where you know where does it end? Um, so that's that's why this is important as well. Um, other than that, I'm trying to think of why is it important to have your board laid out. <laughs> I think those are pretty good reasons, don't you think? Anyway, so now that you know the story that we're going for, and uh, well, I'm going for, you can do something totally different. We're going to get into, let's just start talking about the board itself, because that is crazy important. Okay, right. The board, <laughs> very important. And this, let me put some this again. The board cannot be an afterthought. In fact, I get a board before I even start my projects usually. Sometimes um, it's hard to get to Home Depot. <laughs> so um, so uh, I will start uh, working, you know, cutting foam board and that, that type of thing, but for the most part, I have the boards first. I actually have a scrap board out in the back somewhere where I can at least start, you know, if we can't get to Home Depot, I have, I have something that where I can visualize, okay, here's my two foot by two foot board. With that said, all right, so all the contests that I have participated in, except for one, uh, well, two actually, um, require a standardized maximum maximum board uh, width and length of 24 inches by 24 inches two feet by two feet um, that's the board I'm showing you today because that's the regulations of the Belleville gingerbread walk where this piece is going this year so uh, now the board it's very important to note first off never ever 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 use pine all right, so this is a birch board. It is three-fourths of an inch thick. Now, I've used half-inch thick boards before. If you have a weight limit, like uh, the national contest has a 50-pound weight limit, you want to consider a half-inch board. But you also have to consider, I think if they have a height limit as well, I think you'll be fine. So I know the, the national contest has a, a, a weight limit of 50 pounds and they have a height limit of uh, two feet. So you so you literally in a cube, you, it's two feet by two feet by two feet tall and then you have a 50 pound weight limit. So with that, I can't imagine anything being that heavy you know that that if it's if it's not 50 pounds I think you could get away with a half inch board um, it's not a big deal 
but if you have a piece like this that's bigger than two feet it's not by much but it is bigger than two feet I've had pieces all the way up to four feet uh, tall you do the and for you know two and a half two feet by two feet um, you do need a three-fourths of an inch board it's really important that the board isn't warped you don't see any like it looks like a very strong board you can't bend it or anything like that it's got to be a very the worst thing in the world is to build a perfect gingerbread project and then not the board not be able to stand up on this the be able to hold the weight of it that would be a complete bummer never happened to me so feet I didn't even consider feet before I had it's been I've been using feet for about four years now and I'm like where have you been all my life feet what's feet and why do we use it well all right try to pick up a board you know this board hurts to pick up as it is you know sticking your fingers underneath it you know and then when you're putting it down it smashes your fingers and all right and that's with no weight on it now let's put some weight on it <laughs> and this is going to be a day it's going to be a quasi heavy project right so you want feet now um there are certain kinds of feet you use like it's it's you don't have to go all fancy people have and actually got uh went out online and got furniture feet and things like that hey it looks beautiful but you need to really you want we'll i don't think we'll discuss too much about working within a budget but you really want to work within a budget so um you don't want to spend like five hundred dollars on a project and first place only be three hundred dollars you know what i'm saying here's the different kinds of feet you have these little uh press on feet what they are they're, they are actually made for is um for for chairs so you put them underneath your chairs and so they don't squeak or whatever but all they are are little dots and you stick them on, you just stick them on the bottom um and that's it you stick them on all four sides and you want to be kind of in the same area so all the in the corners you you don't want it lopsided uh, but these are really great i've used these a lot actually yeah i use them all, a whole lot um here's a bigger bigger version of it my husband just likes to buy them i don't know but yeah you can buy a bigger version there's no i mean i guess you get more weight you can you know distribute the weight better I don't think it matters um, whether you buy a big one or a small one. There's another kind. They're sticky on you though, and they do stay stuck on it. I think I lost one foot once, but it was it was really a really heavy project. Now they've got the kind like this that you need a hammer in. So you've got the pad here on this side, but you have to have you've got the little metal piece on the other side. And you need to hammer it in so what you'd have to do is turn your board over <clears throat> like this and then hammer away now you see how why it's important to do this ahead of time because once you once you get the gingerbread project on you can't turn it over you know and work on the feet that's why very important to work on your board first <laughs> even though I know you want to get baking don't bake, work on the board. So, um, <laughs> yeah, no, no, no great house was built on a flat, lousy foundation. So, you know, ham you can hammer these in. Now, the next thing, and this is what we did. We did, we used this one last year as well. I had two projects last year. One, I used a carousel, which is really great. Yeah, I don't call it Lazy Susan for, you know, I'm Susan, so. <laughs> um, it's a carousel and they're round you can get them online I can um, there's some that are better than others and the one that I got was a heavy-duty one and I'm like this doesn't move at all but you know what as soon as my house started getting built and I, the more weight was put on that carousel the better it glided so so I did that last year but I also did this last year for Candyland this is um, homemade feet. <laughs> so my husband 
Um, he uh, went out and cut this for me because I don't want to go out in the cold and, and cut because he doesn't let me cut in the house. <laughs> so I do know how to use a saw. <laughs> but yeah. Anywho, so what, what he does is um, he create his, these are one by twos. They are pine, and I don't think that, that does not matter with, with the one by twos. But what we do is he had me um, draw out uh, one and a half inches around, a uh, one and a half inch border all the way around the bottom of the board. And then he said, Susan, measure it for me. And I told him 21 inches. So then what he did, what he's going to do, because he doesn't let me use a screwdriver either. I don't like using a screwdriver. I strip screws. <laughs> okay, so what we did was we put it around here, like this. And what we're okay. Now the beauty of this is, is it gives you a lot of table. I guess I could do it the other way. I could show you, but it, it gives you a lot of room to put your fingers when you're when you're picking it up. It's just like picking up a little table. It's really nice. Um, you cut these at a 45 degree angle. You don't have to. You can just like, you know, doesn't it, you can just like chop, chop, and then just put them together. They do need to be square. <laughs> does need to be a square. It can't be like lopsided or anything. But um, anyway, the way, reason I like this was with Candyland, when I made that last year, I made these... Um, I made all the little cards that go with Candyland, if you're familiar with the game, and I, I put them across here, and that was really fun. I mean, the judges do see the, they, they do, if you're, if, so this isn't so far in, it's only an inch and a half in, they, the judges can see that, they can see the border, they can see this. So um, with this, I'm going to paint it. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to paint it white or purple yet because of friends it's purple. Um, but I'm going to put some sayings on it. Before he, he um, uh, uh, assembles this for me, I'm going to paint it and put sayings like, how you doing? And um, I don't even have a pla. I, I don't know. You have to be a really big Friends fan to understand that one. Um, but, you know, things from the show Friends, I thought I would uh, paint on here. I'm not sure what yet, but it's really fun to, add, it just adds another dimension to your project. Um, and like I said, anything, the base does, is wood. It does not, it's not gingerbread, so it's really fun to put stuff on uh, <clears throat> like this. And, and this just gives you some added room. Now with that said, this also adds height. So if you have a height restriction to your uh, gingerbread project, I would not do this. <laughs> I would I would go with um, the little feet like this. They're no fun, you know. Uh, but if you want fun, I got something else for you. <laughs> Put this aside because I got to paint this later. Figure out what I'm going to do first. Figure out how to use my Cricut. Oh my goodness! Don't even get me started. Me and the, my Cricut and I have a very tumultuous, tumultuous, I can't say the word, relationship. <sighs> Tell me that. So, <laughs> so, now we're talking, we're going to talk about the edges. So let's just say you have these feet. You've got to use the feet because you have height restriction. Well, guess what? You can still fancy up your base, okay? Um, you see on the, the edges of these boards here, they're rough. They're nasty. They're, they're, they, judges do not like to see, they don't care what kind of feet you have, but by God, you have a bare edge board, you're going to get knocked off. If it's a really tight contest, the one with the bare board is going to lose, I think. I really do. I've heard of it. It just depends on your judge, but really, do you really want to take a chance on that? <laughs> so um, what I do, and this is pretty big, I actually had to order... I did haven't had my veneer ordered yet. I used too much veneer last year. But um, this is what I use. All right, I use a wood veneer. You can get it from Amazon. I just ordered one that's three fourths of an inch. Okay, what these are, you can iron them on if you want to. 
I use, uh, be because this year I'm painting mine, and last year I, um, I stained mine, and I had to, and I, and I, I wrote on it, um, I didn't, I didn't iron it on, I used, um, liquid nail, and liquid nail, uh, you have to get a, a, a little, like a gun thing, um, I might show that in a quickie video. But what you do is, this cleans up your edges. So your edges aren't, aren't nasty like, you know, a plywood edges are. And there's cutters that, that you can buy that once you iron on the band and it's a little bit over, then the cutter, you just slide over the top and it will it'll cut off any excess veneer you have. But sometimes the iron, you know, it takes a while to do. So some um, one year I did both. I ironed and glued. <laughs> Just be really careful with that because your iron may get glue on it. So, but um, if you, uh, what I'm doing here, I'll show you what I'm experimenting with. You know that from Friends, the door, Monica's door, um, I want to recreate that um, that look, and I'm not doing it right. But if you can see, I'm just I'm playing with paint. And uh, if you want to do something like that, and you go, oh Susan, that's a perfect purple and yellow for that door and the um, what is it, the peephole frame that she has? Is that yellow? Um, like I said, I'm trying to get the curves right. What I think I'm going to end up doing is actually. Uh, painting it like I did, but I'm, I'm going to uh, put carbon paper down and then just trace some squiggles because my freehand kind of stinks. But all you need to do is get some paint. Uh, this is, uh, if you want to paint it, and you don't have, you can iron it on and then paint it, no big deal. Just make sure you, before you put any gingerbread on it, you paint it. Um, it you can use uh, what I'm using here if you like the color it's as as art no art <laughs> I keep putting the Aztec it's Arteza and it's uh, lavender and Arteza uh, sunflower yellow and they're uh, they're craft acrylic colors so if you want to do that I think that that's really close to what the apartment was like the apartment colors so if you're really interested in painting the sides, great, those are great colors. Now, let's just say, Susan, this is a little bit too fancy for me. I don't want to do all this stuff. No big deal. You can also, uh, I've seen people put ribbon around it, uh, around, around your edges. You just, I don't know if you glue them on, or I wouldn't staple them on. I think you just glue it on with like tacky glue, something that's going to dry clear. I would, I would actually experiment, you know. I'd, Get a piece of wood and, and, and glue my ribbon down and see which which looks better. I've never used a ribbon before. Um, I have been desperate because I forgot about my board. That was before I cared so much about the boards. <laughs> and I ha I at the end I sanded my edges and I just painted them. I've done that before. Um, but whatever. Uh, Whatever method you choose, make sure that <coughs> your edge, you do something with the edge. You just cannot have a bare edge. You also cannot have a bunch of stuff. Like, um, for example, I use uh, I a lot. I use parsley a lot for my grass. If I'm doing a grass scene, and um, I will get Tylos out, and I will, you know, I'll just paint the Tylos glue or Tylos glue onto the board and uh, just sprinkle the parsley on, right? And just let it dry. But there's been times where I was too fast. I, I worked too fast and some of it dripped down the edge. And so now you've got this big drip of parsley <laughs> on the edge. You don't want that. You don't want anything like that. You want that edge to be clean. No debris from your gingerbread, no icing on it, nothing on it. Because you want that edge to be clean. You actually want everything about your project to be clean. That's one of the um, 
what are the things they judge on? Is cleanliness, you know, um, I said I was going to tell you what they were, but <laughs> cleanliness is one of them. You have to be neat. It has to be neat. So, we've covered the edges. We've covered the feet. Um, we've covered laying out. We did not cover, do we cover laying out your project on the board? That's, I should have said that during the story. You, I actually draw an outline of the building. Once I get it up, I draw the outline of the building, just go around the building, and then I square it off. I take the building off, and I square off where the building should be. So I kind of know when I am starting my project um, where to put everything. This concludes video two. Next week, we're going to be discussing mold making. So until then... See you later.